Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Miles and I like to talk about books. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate you. So today I am going to be talking about some stuff that might be a little controversial. So just putting that out there. I have had a YouTube channel for like two and a half years, something like that. And I started this when I was like 19 I think and I was just getting into reading again I've been a big reader all my life but I shared a lot with you along the way and I have changed a lot as a person since then I'm 21 now I'm almost done with college and my reading tastes have changed so much since I first started this channel so because of that, I wanted to talk about today some five-star ratings that I've given in the past that I regret. And I just feel like there's some books that I've platformed in the past on here that I just don't feel very good about. So I want to talk to you about those, talk to you about why they're problematic, why I regret rating them five stars. Some of these were even in my top 10 favorite books of all time video that I put out quite a while ago. I've since privated it because I don't agree with it anymore and I don't want people that stumble across my page to find that first. <laughs> and I'm working on a new one soon. But yeah, so disclaimer, if I am talking about any of your favorite books here, please don't get mad at me. Please don't yell at me. They were once my favorite books too, and I'm not saying that you have to hate them. I'm not saying that you're problematic and terrible if you like them. I'm hoping that today, I am just in my channel in general, we can like explore the nuance in enjoying works that have problematic parts to them or enjoying works by problematic authors and all of that kind of stuff. So that's a disclaimer. Please don't get mad at me. If you want to discuss something, if you feel like I got something in this video wrong or just have something to take up with me, just put it in the comments below. I would love to have discussions with you guys about any of this. I think it is really important as somebody who reviews books to talk about how my opinions can grow and change. So yeah, let's just get into the video. So first I have a big one to talk about and that is just Grady Hendrix's books in general. Grady Hendrix as an author. When I first started my channel, if you've been around for a long time, you might remember that I loved Grady Hendrix. I loved all of his books. I talked about them all the time. I put one of his books in my top 10 favorite books. And I was just a huge Grady Hendrix fan. And recently, not recently, like a year or so ago, I read one of his books and it really rubbed me the wrong way. I just didn't really enjoy it that much. And since then, I have just totally, it, it's like recontextualized everything that I have read from him. So first, I read My Best Friend's Exorcism, which if you don't know what that's about, it's very popular in the horror community on here. It is about these two best friends in the 80s. They're like high schoolers and one of them starts acting weird and the, her friend just like figures out that she's possessed and the rest of the book kind of goes along that and it's all about like campy 80s. It's kind of like a horror comedy but it gets very dark. And my issues with My Best Friend's Exorcism, it kind of starts my issues with Grady Hendrix. He is a middle-aged white man <laughs> writing about these two best high school best friends and high school best girlfriends and that's like not inherently bad or anything. He puts them in some weird sexual situations that I just think is it's kind of weird coming from an older guy and then he uses the fact that it's in the 80s and it's it's fun to look back on how crazy and un PC the 80s were there's one point in the book where there is like a slave day at school and there's like a mock slave auction and it's just really fucking weird like i don't think it is wrong to write about the you know how racist and sexist and whatever the 80s were i don't think that's a problem but it just felt really unnecessary and weird and like played for laughs of like Look how crazy the 80s were. Isn't this crazy? And it's like, yeah, that's really fucked up. It's not funny. <laughs> it's just like he has 
no idea what it was like to be a black person in the 80s, to be a teenage girl in the 80s. I feel like with Grady Hendrix, it's always just like, this is not your place. And that brings us to his second book, the Southern, it's not his second book, the second book I read from him, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, which just took all of those problems and made them a hundred times worse. It follows a housewife living in the, in some suburbs in, I think in Georgia or South Carolina, I can't remember, in the 90s. And she has a book club. She's pretty like unhappy with her life. And then a vampire moves in like in the neighborhood and it just follows her and her book club trying to take down this vampire and it sounds really fun the premise is really fun it feels very like salem's law dracula it follows that same like story beat but with southern suburban moms so i was really into the premise of this i had a really fun time reading it and I just read it all in one day, didn't really think about it too much, was really just stuck on the premise and was like, wow, what a great book. Looking back on it now, I am like, oh my God, why did I platform this book the way I did? Once again, with the weird sexual stuff, this just makes that even crazier. The vampire, you know, vampirism is inherently like a sexual metaphor. So I don't have a problem with that, obviously, but like the vampirism in this book is explicitly sexual. Instead of just like biting your neck, he only attacks, oh, okay, maybe not only attacks women, but he bites a sensitive area and drinks blood from there, which is really fucking weird. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, why did you need to do that? what was what was the reason for that so that's happening and that's happening to like young girls and boys and women and it's just really weird and creepy and once again i'm like you are too damn old and a man to be writing about this it's just like why do you need to put your female characters in these weird sexual situations there's also multiple other instances of sexual assault there is a rape scene that doesn't like did not feel necessary at all and something that really really turned me off when i was reading this was the main character this is a spoiler alert so just be aware of that the main character the mother her daughter eventually starts being attacked by this vampire and so is being sexually assaulted by him and she lets it happen because it's during this part in the story where like you know nobody's listening to her so she's kind of like doesn't know what to do is like complacent with all of it which I think is I guess I understand but when it comes to her daughter I feel like that just showed like a fundamental misunderstanding of women and motherhood like I don't know she let it happen and that's just really fucked up i just don't think i don't know a single mother that would let that happen that just felt like something very specific that i was like you clearly don't understand women why do you only write female main characters it i'm not talking about riley sager today because i've never rated any of his books five stars but it's a very similar way to how i feel about riley sager where i'm like know your place. Like, I don't think that men shouldn't write women, obviously, but it's just weird when like the only books you put out are female main characters writing from the perspective of women about what women have been through, about women experiencing sexual assault and always having sexual situations and sexual situations with minors involved teenage girls. And it's just fucking weird. I'm just like, why do you need to do this in every single book? It's a big thing in the horror community, for sure. But it just, it really rubs me the wrong way with Grady Hendrix. And there's more um, race stuff that is handled really poorly here. The vampire at first starts out only attacking people in like the black side of town. So that's why he's going under the radar, which I feel like Grady Hendrix thought made like a poignant point <laughs> about race here but it just made it so the only black characters are just made to suffer and die and I just it just sits really wrong with me I read this Goodreads review 
that is by Kai Spellmeyer, who I'll link below, but they said, if a vampire is more realistic than a black person with a degree or a nice suburban house, there's definitely something wrong. And that's just how I feel. It just, it feels really weird and unnecessary. And yeah, so Southern Book Club, just like, do better. <laughs> so I did rate both of these books five stars when I first read them, which is really embarrassing considering everything that I just told you, my current issues with them. And I mean, I'm not like making excuses. I don't think that's what it's about. But like, you know, when I read it, I read them very fast. And I was really swept up in the hype of like, this new horror author that everybody is obsessed with. Everybody loves Grady Hendrix. Of course, his book is good. And the concept for both of the books are so fun. I just got like swept away by that and like didn't think critically. When I first started my channel, I just did not really think critically about the books I was reading as much. And so I just, I just, I really regret rating those five stars and putting them on such a high platform. I just don't like it. I just don't really like what Grady Hendrix has like made his brand doing. I, this all like came to a head when I finally read, I read the final girl support group and I read that like right as it came out. It was like a year after I had read these other books. I was really, really anticipating it. And I read it and I was just like, it, it all kind of clicked. I was just like, why is he, why are all of these characters women? Again, he doesn't understand women again. And it was just, it fell super flat for me. And that really started to change my opinion on him. And I just started really pulling away from enjoying his books. I gave him another chance this year with How to Sell a Haunted House. And I hated that book. I DNF'd it at like 15% in. I thought it was really annoying and just insufferable. I did read Paperbacks from Hell recently though. And I did enjoy that. That is a nonfiction book. So I feel like that was a little easier to get away with. It didn't have so much like personal, I, I don't know. It just, it was just like, it didn't, I, it didn't have the same issues that the other books did for me. So next up is a book that I am also worried will be controversial. And that is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. And this, like everybody fucking loved this book when it came out. Everybody was talking about it. It's a like sweet queer fantasy about a disenchanted caseworker working for the Department of Magical Youth. And he gets assigned a case for a like to go to a specifically like an orphanage for specifically dangerous magical youth. It's a whole thing. He he goes and he meets all of these kids that everyone thinks are dangerous and need to be locked away forever and it just changes his whole worldview and it's just like so cute and whimsical and whatever. When I first read it, I really enjoyed it. It was cute and whimsical and it just kind of like it was it was just like a sweet nice little read. It was very emotional and I definitely like cried at the end, so I liked it. I'm pretty easy that way. Recently though, I found out that it was inspired by the 60s scoop, which I didn't know what that was, but it is a infamous period of time in Canada in the 1960s where legislation made it super super easy and like encouraged uh, welfare workers to kidnap indigenous children from their families and relocate them to white families. So you're like, how does that, how does that relate? Here's a quote from TJ Klune referencing the 60s scoop and its influence on the house in the Cerulean Sea. And I got this from a Goodreads review by somebody named Cass, and I will link that in the description as well. Here's what he said. I didn't want to co-opt, you know, a history that wasn't mine. I'm a cis white dude, so I can't ever really go through something like that, what those children had to go through. So I sat down and I was like, I'm just going to write this as a fantasy. <laughs> like, why? I just don't get it. It's, this is a recurring theme here so far in this video where it's just like, this was not your place. If you, like, if he hadn't said that, I would have had no idea. And maybe that's on me being ignorant. But I just think that is so fucking weird that he said that with his whole chest. That, yeah, like, 
you can't ever really go through something like what those children went through. You don't need to write something inspired by that. It's just, it's just not his place. And I just don't like it. And it's really, it just kind of like recontextualized the book for me. It's turned me off of his other recent books. I'm just not really interested in TJ Klune anymore. And I know that, you know, to some people that might not be like the worst offense you could make in a book, but I just think it's weird. <laughs> and I don't like it, and that's okay. Next, I wanna talk about Dark Archives by Megan Rosenblum. And if you have been here for a while, once again, this was like the beginning of last year or something, I read Dark Archives and I loved it. I gave it five stars. I really, really enjoyed it. It might even be on my best books of 2022, which looking back is not great. Don't love that. But if you don't know what it's about, it is a nonfiction slash memoir with this librarian talking about books bound in human skin and trying to talk about the history of that, why it happened, why it's interesting, that kind of stuff. I want to be a librarian. I was really excited by the concept of this book. Blew through it in one day, really enjoyed it, gave it five stars, never looked back. A couple months ago, my friend Meredith, friend of the channel, love you Meredith, uploaded a Goodreads review because I think I had recommended Dark Archives to her because she is also interested in library and archival work and she <laughs> tore it to shreds rightfully and I was just like oh no like I was really wrong and it's okay to be wrong and Meredith put it much more eloquently than I can so I'm going to read an excerpt from her review and I will also link that below. She said, this book could have been written so much more interestingly if there was a more nuanced historical and ethical debate. I think this book has received so much praise because it has fallen into the hands of horror slash true crime fans who have become desensitized to the humanity of this topic. The author's arguments can be summed up as, it's probably wrong to make books from human skin, but it wasn't problematic at the time. Plus I'm a nerd and they're cool. Like it should be problematic. The author literally describes a woman of lower social strata who died in a hospital. Her skin is used in the book binding process. There is zero talk of consent or how maybe we shouldn't continue to use her body in this manner. I'd love for Paul Needham, who is another um, person interviewed in this book, to write a book because his opinion was actually interesting and showed empathy. And I just like could not agree with this more looking back on the book. I don't know what the hell I was on, why I did not pick up on this. I was not reading it critically and I feel stupid and I regret it and that's okay. But I just do not want to platform this book any longer. It There's a lot of like racial politics also wrapped up in dark archives, which are just like totally ignored. It's It's really weird. There is a fine line between like death positivity, which is kind of what I went into this book expecting and just like exploitative writing and just being careless, especially when it comes to marginalized people. It was mostly women and people of color who were, they had their skin bound into books and that's so fucked up. And it is not treated with any ounce of like, why did this happen and why like what power imbalances went into this happening. It is literally just through the lens of, isn't this cool and interesting? When there's so much more to it than that, this could have been done well and it just wasn't. Sorry for the cut, my phone just died, so I am back. But yeah, thank you Meredith for bringing this to light for me. I feel so dumb and that's okay. That's why I'm making this video to talk about why I am wrong sometimes. <laughs> okay, so we are at our last author of today, and that is Stephen King, and we're specifically going to talk about the books It and Pet Cemetery. If, once again, if you've been around for a while, especially towards the very, very beginning of my channel, I was a huge Stephen King fan. If I could tell you, like, anybody that has been the most influential to my reading and just to me being into horror, it would be Stephen King. I read Carrie for the first time when I was in fourth grade, which is way too young. 
and I loved it and it was just like a game changer. Like from then on I was obsessed with horror. I was definitely into it before but this was the first like adult horror that I had ever read and so I just loved Stephen King. I used to have a collection of like over 30 of his books. I still have a couple old editions of books from him and Stephen King like you know the past authors that I've just talked about I'm not interested in reading any work from them anymore or I'm just like not going to revisit those books or anything. Stephen King is definitely the most complicated and like nuanced relationship I have out of all of these authors because he was so important to me as a kid and his book has like liter his books have like literally changed my life and looking back on them though I don't feel great about that. As I've gotten older, it just becomes harder and harder to ignore the like glaring issues with his work. It has uh, the antagonists use like racial slurs and that will just always sit wrong with me. A white person writing racial slurs in a book just, just is bad. I just don't like that. <laughs> There's also some other problems with it. That one scene, if you guys know what I'm talking about, you know weird stuff weird stuff pet cemetery and the shining use indigenous stereotypes and in their horror which i just don't agree with i think is really fucking weird also just gross tropes in the history of horror that we've largely left behind but this definitely the popularity of those two books and movies continues to perpetuate that these books were published in the 70s and 80s and his recent work hasn't included any of these problems so I do appreciate the fact that he has changed and adapted his writing over time and seems like he regrets that. It's just complicated, it's hard because like I have, I think I have all three of those books, I think I'm going to reread them eventually and definitely this section of the video more than the other ones I'm kind of like what do you think? <laughs> I'm interested in hearing y'all's thoughts. I think I'm going to reread these books and I think it's possible to read them through a critical lens. I don't think that makes me a bad person or anything that I want to revisit these pieces from when I was younger that I really loved and I really connected with and really, really scared me. Specifically Pet Cemetery. I used to say it was like one of my favorite books of all time. It was in that video but I just don't appreciate the way it uses indigenous stereotypes, but there's parts of that writing and there's parts of the craft of that book that I, I love. And so it's complicated. I don't know, but yeah, that is kind of all I have for y'all today. I hope this was an interesting video. I haven't, I don't know, I haven't really done anything like this before, but I thought it would be cool to talk about. I think there's a lot of pressure in the book community and just like as a reviewer too, to feel like I'm always right and to feel like I have the correct opinion on books and stuff. And so I don't know, I just, I, I want to talk about like problematic books that I've enjoyed in the past and like why I regret that. I also think it's okay to have fondness for media that hasn't aged well. I don't know, it's a complicated topic. I would really recommend checking out the channel Jesse on YouTube. They have a whole series, they talk about all the time, like canceled authors that are on my TBR was a recent book that, a uh, recent video that they came out with. And they talk about books that I love, but I would never recommend. And those videos really explore the nuance in enjoying content that has problems enjoying things that have harmed other people it's it's just a it's a whole complicated thing and i think there is a lot of pressure just like on the internet right now to just be right all the time and to never be problematic at all and not read anything problematic and yeah all of that but yeah i hope you enjoyed this today if you you know if you want to leave me a comment I would love to talk to you about some of this stuff. If you related to any of these books, if you have any specific books that you look back on now and you're just like, ooh, like I'm just embarrassed that anyone ever saw that I liked that, I wanna hear about it. Let me know. <laughs> Let's normalize being wrong sometimes. It's okay to be wrong. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe if you would like. I'm almost at 700 subscribers, which is 
really, really crazy. And I am super grateful for all of you. Thank you so much. And yeah, I have my Goodreads and my Instagram linked in the description below. And that is all I have for y'all today. Thank you so much. Bye.